Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Yeah, definitely. Um, really appreciate everybody joining today. Um, so uh, today we're going to do the seven ways to get more donations through your donation form. If you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Um, a little housekeeping here, of course. Um, everybody's probably pretty familiar with Zoom by this point, but feel free to to ask any questions in the Q and A area or in the chat. Um, I will be keeping an eye out for that. Um, happy to answer. Definitely, you know, make sure you put those in there as you think of them, um, so that uh, we, you know, you don't forget them along the way. But uh, we'll have plenty of time at the end for uh, questions. Next slide. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm Mark Becker, founding partner of Cathexis Partners. Uh, we've been doing this for about 13 years now, um, and uh, happy to help out if you have any kind of technology needs. We're, we're platform agnostic. We work with a variety of different partners, and uh, today we're joined by uh, one of our one of our favorites. Um, and with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Candice, and she's going to jump right into it. Thank you so much, Mark. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, as Mark said, we're going to be going over seven ways to get more donations through your donation form on our webinar today. And just as we get started, I would love to hear from you in the chat what you're hoping to learn from this webinar, what your top takeaway uh, is. So yeah, uh, a little bit about me. My name is Candice. I am the manager of content and education at Causebox. And so for the last six years now, I've been working with nonprofits to help them get up and running with their digital fundraising. So a little bit about Causevox before I dive in. Um, so Causevox is a digital fundraising platform. And so we've really tried to make our software really simple and easy to use um, and get up and running with donation pages, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and now ticketing um, with less hassle. So if you're interested, feel free to check us out at causevox.com. And so one of the things that we do provide is donation forms. Um, and if you're interested in learning more, just let me know. And then our crowdfunding templates are really popular, allow you to really simply fundraise online um, while you can always do peer to peer and get your supporters to fundraise on your behalf with our, our easy peer to peer solution. And then also ticketing that we just launched, which is very exciting. So like a lot of virtual event ticketing is happening right now, but you can use us for in person or hybrid events later in the year too. So that's enough about Cosbox. I want to get into all of our content for today. Um, so our, our agenda is going to look at um, number one, just like looking at fundraising in today's context. So kind of want to set the stage of where we're at and then using that to um, uh, really look at the ways that you can increase donations on your donation form. And then I'll uh, do my best to leave some time for Q&A at the end. We should have about 10 minutes, um, but I do have a, quite a bit of contact, uh, content that I want to get to. Um, so yeah, so any questions that come in, feel free to send those along the way. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about fundraising today. And I think, you know, all of us are in a similar place where, um, you know, a lot of the struggles that nonprofits are, ha are having right now is that there's tighter budgets than ever. Um, and there's also a lot of different ways that, you know, we weren't really used to working before. So um, like myself, I'm working at home. Um, I used to be in an office. I'm sure many of you are joining from home as well. Um, or as far as running your programs, you know, you may have had to reimagine them online in a virtual space, or at least make some adjustments um, to really help, um, uh, you know, kind of go along with the guidelines required um, nowadays. So uh, one of the other big challenges um, at a lot of organizations is that um, fundraising events um, have been canceled um, and, and kind of still are. I mean, I know I, some of the nonprofits that we work with are planning in-person events in the fall, um, but it is a really hard and still kind of uncertain time. So we don't really know, you know, when we're all clear. It's, it's nice that, you know, people are vaccinated or getting vaccinated and we're, we're starting to open things back up, but we don't know when those like in-person events are really going to look the same as they did before. 
Um, so there's a lot of things that are still sort of up in the air and that makes it really hard for nonprofits um, to plan and flourish when it comes to fundraising. Um, one of the things that we saw seen, of course, as a result of this whole last crazy year um, is this real blend of marketing and fundraising. While, you know, fundraising and marketing offline were still sort of these two uh, slightly overlapping, but two kind of separate buckets and sometimes separate teams, we've seen that because of this huge trend to digital first and, and virtual fundraising, um, the blend between you know, digital marketing and digital fundraising really overlaps. So the best fundraisers are usually also the best marketers. And so with all of this, um, you know, we've seen that really the nonprofits that will continue to flourish going forward are the ones that are the quickest to adopt a comprehensive digital first fundraising approach or fundraising strategy. And um, your donation form fits really well into this. So um, I know I kind of started off with some of the some of the challenges, but I do have some good news for you. So um, according to the 2021 MNR benchmark report, total online revenue grew by 32% in 2020. So that really does show the massive shift to online fundraising as such a, a huge player in, in fundraising today. Um, there was also uh, an 11.4% increase in new donors. This isn't like just online, this is just across the board. Um, that's from the Fundraising Effectiveness Project. And so that also means that there's a lot of new donors that are interested in, in giving. And so you have the opportunity to kind of capitalize on that trend and get more new donors for your organization. And uh, the MNR benchmark report also showed that um, the increase in donations, so that 32% increase um, overall for online gifts, um, really had more to do with more people giving, which kind of goes along with that, that last finding from the Fundraising Effectiveness Project. Um, so it's more people giving online rather than people giving more online. So kind of an interesting insight to, to sort of take in and work into your approach. And I also uh, took a look and saw from the MNR benchmarks report that the average conversion rate on nonprofit donation forms is only 21%. So that means that one out of five people that actually see your donation form tend to actually donate. So there is a huge increase. So if you are able to even uh, optimize your donation form for conversion rates just a little bit and get two out of five of those donors, you're getting twice the amount of donations coming in online. So I think this is really important because with more people giving online than ever before, um, you have the opportunity to increase this conversion rates and really raise more through your donation form. So there's, there's a lot of opportunity to grow. Um, with donors today, I think it's really important that we think about our donation forms along the lines of giving donors what they want. Um, so what do donors want? Um, I think all of us as people um, always are going online. I'm always on my phone making purchases. I'm buying um, you know, things on Amazon or buying uh, clothes on, you know, uh, one of these, one of these many sites. So uh, what I'm looking for when I go to do anything online is it has to be easy. It has to be convenient. And if it takes too long, I'm probably going to navigate away. So the same things apply as with any purchase that you make online or just um, on, especially on mobile. Um, is that you're giving your donors the best experience that kind of keeps up with how they're used to navigating um, online. So is your donation form as easy as it is to make a purchase on Amazon? If not, you probably have um, some opportunities to uh, you know, make it better. 
And so the stakes of not having a great donation experience are really high um, because it's going to end up with, you know, a donation form that isn't loading properly or isn't loading as fast as it could or has a lot of form fields or whatever. Um, it's going to result in less donations for your organization overall. Your donors are going to be less happy uh like if they're frustrated trying to make a donation they're like okay well like they can't possibly want my donation this much if it's this hard to give um and then there's less return on your effort because you can do the best marketing in the whole wide world having people you know great email marketing and digital advertising and all of that but if you're driving people all of those people to a donation form that's not optimized for conversions you're going to get a less return on all of your effort on in those ways and um yeah you're going to end up missing out on a lot of gifts so um the experience for your donors is is really super important to make all of your marketing efforts worth it so all of this to say is that in today's day and age, you need a great donation page to really um, capture as many donors as possible online. So it's never been more essential um, to have a great donation page that actually uh, is helping you drive more results and, and is optimized for conversion so that you can actually get more donors who, or more potential donors who land on your donation page to actually complete the donation. Um, and also um, considers that, you know, a lot of donors are looking to give on their phones and you know, are used to that already um, with other purchases. And then overall just has like a great experience for your donors. So um, we're gonna be breaking down a lot of these different Op uh, ways that you can optimize your donation form and ways that you can just simply drive more donations um, through through your form on your website. So let's kind of dive into my seven tips. So across the board, um, what we found is that there's basically three main ways that you can grow fundraising um, online. So there's uh, acquiring more donors. So that kind of goes along with, in, in today's context, increasing conversion rates. Um, then there's increasing gift size. So getting the donors who, or potential donors who land on your donation page to actually give a higher gift. And there's also um, thinking about donor retention and how you can not just get people to give online through your donation form once, but to stick around and give uh, for the long term. So uh, the first way to acquire more donors through your donation form is actually just having really easy navigation. And uh, I like to start with the simplest <laughs> thing you can do, which is basically making sure that your donate button stands out on your website. Um, 360 Match Pro found out that um, there was a 190% increase in donations when you make your donation form stand out on your website. So I just wanted to show you a quick example from the Land Conservancy of New Jersey. So right when I go on their website, it is so clear. The biggest, brightest button up in the upper right corner is the donate button. So uh, before I look at anything else, my eye is immediately drawn to that big yellow donate button. Um, there's no confusion about where I can go to make a gift. Um, anywhere I scroll on this page, that donate button stays at the top. And because of that, they're going to be able to drive a lot more donors. I can't tell you how often, because you know we work with so many different organizations where um, I find it hard to find even their donation page because maybe it's hidden under a uh, get involved um, uh, get involved button, for example, or it's you know kind of buried in in um, underneath in different parts of their website. So uh, if your donors or if your page visitors are having a hard time finding where to give, you're gonna end up missing out and not even getting people to that donation form in the first place. So uh, when you make it really easy for people to find and navigate to your donation page, you're just kind of 
giving your donors a better experience to help them find where they can contribute, which overall just kind of increases their happiness and willingness to give. And then also, you know, your organization benefits from more people actually reaching your donation form um, so that they're more likely to complete that gift. So uh, a few quick tips for easy navigation. Um, you want to ensure that your donate button is in the upper right corner. I was trying to find um, the stat that I saw, but it's actually kind of been proven that having your donate button in the upper right corner is most effective. It's what people um, people's eyes go to kind of first um, when it comes to uh, looking for that donate button. So people are kind of expecting it there. So I think that's something you can um, kind of keep in mind when you're thinking about adding donate to your navigation. Um, it's also been proven that if your call to action is really clear, it's more likely that your donors will, uh, or potential donors will click on it. Um, so having your call to action be donate or give has been proven um, to be more effective than softer asks, which are like take action, support, get involved, because you don't really know what that means. Like, I don't know, like you can support an organization or take multiple actions for an organization. But if I know that I'm going right to the donate page, I know where I'm going. So uh, just be clear about your call to action. And also um, think about not just in the top navigation, but having additional call to actions throughout your website to give um, on multiple pages. Because you know, if people are reading, um, for example, content about your programs, you should also have a call to action to donate to support that program right on the page as well. So it should be kind of integrated into all the content across your site. All right. So number two uh, is have a branded embedded form right on your website. Um, so this helps with both acquisition and donor retention. So uh, uh, there was a study that found that supporters are 70% more likely to give again if they gave on a branded donation page the first time. So I think this uh, this finding really shows that people like to give on pages that they feel comfortable or actually related to the organization <laughs> that they're trying to support. Um, so, you know, for example, like if I'm a donor and I'm trying to give to an organization and I hit that donate button, but it gets redirected to this whole different page, maybe just like, you know, for example, even PayPal, um, so I get thrown to PayPal and there's no branding on it. There's no logo. I don't even really know, is this, this is the organization? This doesn't feel like this is the organization's page that I should be giving on. So when you have your branding on your page, it's going to make your supporters feel more comfortable. Um, this is also the Land Conservancy's donation um, page um, embedded right on their website. So the advantage of this is that they have, you know, more control over the content on their page itself. You can see that they have, um, you know, their header at the top, donate, and then they have, you know, more content around, you know, when you donate to the Land Conservancy of New Jersey, you help preserve and, you know, they're, they're kind of using this page to brand and also, um, increase donations um, just by, by being communicative about who they are on the page itself. So um, when you do have the chance or if you do have the chance to embed your form on your website and have more control over the content, there's a lot of benefits to that because when your donors click that donate button and they stay right on your website, it definitely increases their level of trust that they make sure and they feel that their gift is going right to your organization. Um, and it also does benefit um, your donors because they get to spend more time on your website actually viewing your content and taking in more information about your organization. So, um, Part of this also increases conversion rates. If people are taken to another page to complete a donation, they might drop off. Um, so when you keep people right on your website and especially if it's um, you know, nicely branded, um, it's gonna increase those conversion rates. And um, like that other stat earlier, um, they're actually 70% more likely to give again if it was properly branded um, as well. So, 
uh, both both uh, boost donor acquisition and retention. So um, yeah, so basically when you're thinking about your donation form, take a look and see if you do have a redirect and consider ways that you can keep your donors right on your website, um, just because it does reduce confusion, um, it limits clicks, and then you know they basically get the best experience when they stay right on, their, right on your site. Um, if you do have to do a redirect, um, I would say uh, make sure that your logo is on that page or, um, uh, well, and have a branded URL. So, um, for example, it should be um, donate.thelandconservancy.org, for example. So, uh, if your URL is branded, it will make your donors feel more comfortable. Um, but ideally, there's no redirect to another page. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so hopefully you can embed your form on your website for the best experience. All right, number three. So um, we've seen that actually donation tiers, which are the different levels of giving on your donation form, help to not just um, drive, uh, drive up gifts, but also increase um, retention as well. Um, I should have put acquisition on here because I do think it helps um, drive acquiring new donors too. Um, so a study found from the Charities Aid Foundation that 68% of donors agree that knowing how their donation makes an impact is important to their gift. Um, and one of our customers a little while ago, uh, they implemented these impact-driven donation tiers right on their form on their website. Um, and so because of that, they were really showcasing what $25 did for the organization versus what $50 did for the organization. And with these more impact driven donation tiers that donors could select them, uh, select from, um, they saw a hundred dollar increase in their average gift size, which is unbelievable. So they switched from PayPal, which was generic. They didn't have those tiers in place, but when they had these tiers in place and specifically had impact tied to those tiers, it resulted in a hundred hundred dollar increase in their average gift size. So I don't know across the board, but um, this was a really interesting case study. So I wanted to show you an example of these donation tiers and what they could look like. This was from Skid Row Housing Trust. Um, they actually did a COVID like emergency fundraising um, uh, campaign for their, their shelters. So um, you can kind of see what these tiers looked like. They have $75 and it shows that provides 75 thermometers or um, $150 provides 150 residents with antibacterial soap and, and etc. cetera. Um, so I think the thing with donation tiers is that it really helps your donors choose an amount based on the impact that they wanna make rather than just choosing an arbitrary dollar amount. Um, and one of the things I do always tell our customers, cause they're like, what should our donation tiers be? What if we don't actually use that $150 for antibacterial soap? But the idea with this is actually just giving the donor idea of what their donation could be used for um, so that they kind of get a picture of, you know, how you're using their donation. Um, so it makes it really clear in the, in the mind of the donor how their, their donation can make an impact. Um, so the benefits of donation tiers is that it helps them actually choose their gift amounts quickly and easily. Um, because they're not having to just kind of come up with their own number on their own. They can just kind of take a look and see what other people or they're assuming that these tiers are what other people are giving. So it makes it easy for them to make their own decisions about what they should give. Um, and then by showing them the impact that they can make with their gift, um, it's really, you know, basically helping drive more gifts and higher gifts. Um, so you get to really increase your gift size this way. And I do think that it helps with um, acquisition and retention as well. So I actually wanted to spend some time going through donation tiers because I do think they're really important. And just some of the best practices that I usually do go over um, when you're thinking about creating donation tiers for your form. So um, 
I typically do see that between four to six tiers works best. Um, if there's 10 different selections to choose from, your donors are gonna be a little overwhelmed and it's gonna take them longer to make a donation, which you never wanna make it longer because that will you know, impact um, conversion rates. So four to six tiers are digestible um, and easy for donors to select from. And kind of alongside that, keep your description short. Um, like I even think like maybe this is a little bit too long, but I think it's, it's very specific, so it's helpful. Um, but, you know, if you're able to keep your description short, like, you know, uh, $30 is 30 meals, you know, I think it's that helps uh, people digest the content quickly and easily and make their selection. Um, and then you can also think through what your average gift size is, you know, take a look at your data um, and probably have a donation tier that's about the average gift size. I actually recommend increasing it a little bit. So if you, the average donation is $75, make that tier $80 because then you're gonna kind of push people to give a little bit higher in that way. Um, and then, you know, have those different tiers so that they're not too close together. Um, I see most tiers start at about 25 to $50, if that's helpful. Um, and uh, studies have shown that the, uh, your donors tend to pick the second level of donation tiers because no one wants to be like, you know, the, the cheapskate and, and pick, the, uh, pick the first level. So if you want to push donors to give a specific amount, really think through um, what that second tier is going to look like in your list. Um, and of course, one of the things that you want to do is communicate communicate impact as much as possible with those donation tiers, but also integrate impact statements, images, graphics, anything else on the page itself. So with that embedded form on your site, um, you do have the opportunity to showcase more impact through graphics or um, language, kind of like what um, the Land Conservancy had is that little pa paragraph of you know how their donation is making an impact. Um, so do your best to really integrate not just uh, impact on the donation tiers itself, but also on the page. Um, images showing who is benefiting is actually fantastic, um, kind of like removes uh, the barrier between the donor and the beneficiaries. Um, with those tiers, if you can break it down by how many people are benefiting from the gift, I think that's helpful. Um, if not, you can also showcase the number of items provided, like Skid Row Housing Trusted. Um, with some organizations, it's hard. You're donating services. So if you can think through maybe like what would an hour of your services cost um, and kind of quantify it that way, that's been helpful for a lot of organizations. Um, and you could always do like the type of thank you that your donor receives or potentially um, kind of giving donors different titles. So if you're, uh, you know, this level donor, you're an all-star, for example, you know, bronze, silver, gold is um, kind of the, the most generic version of that. But, um, you know, giving your donors like kind of titles for their, their level of gift, I think that's helpful if you can't tie it to how many people are benefiting or the number of items provided. Um, also, you know, of course, uh, do your best to communicate how exactly funds are being used and, and distributed throughout the, this whole process. So that's donation tiers. Um, I wanted to dive a little bit deeper on that one, but um, number four is optimized for monthly recurring giving. So this both helps with retention and increasing gift size. So recurring donors are uh, tend to give 42% more annually than one-time donors. Network for Good um, showed that. And uh, recurring donors actually have a 90% retention rate as opposed to a 46% retention rate for one-time donors. So your recurring donors tend to stick around for a lot longer. Um, so not only do they give more over the course of the year, but you know, you're more likely to retain them um, year over year, which is you're, you're you know, basically increasing your donations twice, um, twice as much that way by increasing donor retention by twice, two times. Um, also really 
encouraging statistic from the MNR benchmarks report um, that just came out that recurring giving actually grew 25% in 2020. So more and more nonprofits are seeing recurring revenue. And I do think that this probably does have something to do with um, a lot more millennials and maybe even Gen Z donors coming into the coming into play. Um, as it has also been proven that that is like a preferred giving method for millennial and Gen Z donors. <clears throat> Everyone has subscriptions nowadays, right? Um, Netflix and uh, Amazon and, and everything. So why not subscribe to give monthly to your organization? So uh, a lot of benefits. So your donors can give over time. Um, they don't have to make a big donation all at once. It feels more manageable. Um, but you also give them the opportunity to partner with your organization to actually have more of a long-term impact with you. So I think your, your donors, um, knowing that their donation is making an impact throughout the year, gives you also more time to report back to them and showcase, you know, how their donations are making an impact rather than just having that one opportunity from that one-time gift. So, uh, your, your recurring donors kind of feel extra special. And then you also benefit greatly from predictable income, increased donor retention rates, and overall increased lifetime value of that donor overall. So they're probably going to stick around for a much longer time than some of those newly acquired one-time donors. Um, who doesn't like predictable revenue, right? Um, so uh, yeah, recurring fundraising is, is, I think, one of the things that you should really incorporate on, into your donation form if you haven't already. Um, but there's also ways that you, sh you can like optimize for recurring giving and drive more recurring gifts. Um, and so one of the things that I do recommend is at least trying it out and seeing um, how recurring recurring giving if it's defaulted as the first option on your donation form instead of one time, um, what that looks like for your organization, because I would bet that you're probably going to increase conversions for recurring gifts that way um, by defaulting recurring gifts. Um, and there's also donation tiers um, that you can actually uh, you know, those donation tiers don't only have to be for those one-time gifts. I would also encourage you to create donation tiers that are optimized for recurring donors as well. Um, so what, you know, the $25 does every month for your organization. So they can kind of um, keep that in mind when they're making their gift. Um, one of the things that I also see a lot is having that, it doesn't have to exactly be this. I think you can play around with the numbers, but when the recurring tier is less, like between that first one-time tier and the recurring donation tier, uh, when the recurring tier is about a third of the size of the one-time tier, it really does help um, drive more recurring gifts because they're looking at, you know, um, $25 a month versus, you know, $750 a month. People will go, oh, seven fifty. That's so easy. But then you just increase that donor's gift size by four times throughout the year. So kind of think through um, what those lesser um, amounts could look like, because you know, overall, over the course of the year, that's going to drive way higher gifts. Um, one of the things that you could also do is having like a recurring specific donation page or a recurring specific push where you engage, you know, a lot of existing donors and prompt them to give monthly on your form. Um, just something to think about because I've seen that work really well, especially when you do like a, a specific push, um, basically to get more of your one time donors to switch to monthly gifts. Um, so here's just like a look at, you know, one of these donation forms with monthly recurring defaulted. So that's, you know, basically the first option that's highlighted when people get to the form and they can switch to one time if they want to. Um, but just kind of puts the donor in the monthly mindset when they first reach the page. And then this is actually um, one of the uh, recurring gift campaigns that were run on our platform. So they, in a 30 day period, did a sprint to get a bunch of uh, recurring donors to make a gift um, through the form on this donation, um, this fundraising site. So it was really effective for them. And now they just have that monthly recurring revenue they can rely on coming in every month um, from this 30 day sprint. 
All right, let's talk about just making your donation process quick and easy overall. Um, again, this is something I, I kind of mentioned earlier where, you know, we're all used, we're all, we're all on the go. Um, there's a million things distracting us at any given point. Um, so the quicker and easier your donation process is, um, the more you're going to get more donors to convert on your form. So you're acquiring more donors. Um, and it's also will increase increase the chances that your donors will give again because they had such a great experience. Um, so a study by HubSpot. Um, and so this is just any, this isn't necessarily donation forms. This is any form across the internet. Conversion rates increased on, on forms when, uh, conversion rates increased 50% when form fields were lowered from four to three. So simply removing one required field on a form increased conversion rates 50%. So if you can get rid of any unnecessary fields on your form, you're gonna see a huge boost in conversions. Um, also, donors are 38% more likely to give on responsive websites. So if it's easy to navigate, easy to, you know, it doesn't take forever to load. Um, so the quicker it loads, the quicker the response time donors are more likely to give. So um, your donors will, you know, when you optimize for a quick and easy process, it takes them less time, it's less difficult, and um, overall just uh, is less confusing too. They're not waiting around trying to see if this page loads. Um, and so uh, they have a better experience overall. And then you also benefit from those increased conversion rates and most likely those retention rates as well, because you're gonna get more people coming back to give again. Um, so when you're looking at your donation form, I would recommend um, just doing a test donation on just, on any device um, and seeing what that looks like for you. Um, seeing if you can reduce any of those form fields. If there's something that, you know, I know people want phone number, but if you don't need phone number, if you're not contacting people over the phone very often, uh, maybe remove that. And then you can always follow up with donors later and ask for that info. Um, also the faster the page loads, it's just going to, get people to that page quicker and more likely to complete their gift. Um, less steps overall. So um, one of the things on, on Cosbox is that we have like a two-step process. They put in select an amount and the next page they put in their details. Um, so if your process looks like four or five steps to complete a gift, um, you might want to look at at that and kind of remove some of those steps if possible, um, even if it means adding a couple form fields onto one page, just because the less clicking they have to do, the better. Um, overall, looking at how long it actually takes to make a donation, um, we do recommend trying a donation on your site and seeing, seeing how long it takes. Um, something that we've really tried to push for is, you know, having a 15 second or less donation process. So it shouldn't take longer than 15 seconds to actually complete a donation. Um, and, you know, everyone kind of moves a little bit differently, but that's just something that on average we've found. Um, and then also making sure that uh, your donation form isn't confusing. So, um, you know, basically having the most clear and simple instructions on the form. So there's not too much text to read or um, something that's, you know, they're not sure, do I need to click here or do this, you know, should be as, as easy as possible, basically. All right, let's talk a little bit about mobile optimization because this really does play into where we're at today. Um, there's a lot of trends towards mobile. Um, so PaySafe found, this, this data is from 2019, so I would bet that it's even higher now, but um, PaySafe found that 54% of consumers have used a mobile wallet to make a payment. So people are using Apple and Google Pay more than ever. I use Apple Pay maybe on a daily basis myself. Um, so this is a huge trend in giving. Um, because it's a huge trend overall. And also we've found that about 65% of traffic on all of our sites, donation pages and um, included is coming from mobile. 
so uh, I know this stat can vary a little bit, but um, yeah, about 65% of traffic is on mobile. So you can bet at least half, but if not more of the people landing on your donation form are on their phone. Um, and also the MNR benchmarks report did show that there was a 9% increase in mobile traffic throughout 2020. Um, and this comes after a few years of, um, of drastic increases as well. So more and more people are trying to give on their phone. Um, so one of the things that you want to make sure is that, um, people can really easily give on any device, um, and even including mobile payments in that as well. So people at least have the option, um, to, to give through Apple or Google pay, um, if they don't have their credit card right on hand, because that one click makes it really easy and convenient for your donor, but will also absolutely help you get more gifts um, coming through your page. Um, so yeah, the benefits for your donors is that they can really easily give on the device that they're using at the moment. They don't have to go back and be like, oh, I'll do it online later on my laptop. Um, so it just in, improves their experience and also saves them a lot of um, effort if even having to take out a credit card, if you have those mobile payment options available, makes it really seamless and easy. Um, and then of course you get increased conversions from this um, as well. So um, take a look at your donation form and make a test on, on your device. Is it easy for you? If you're having a hard time and there's a lot of scrolling and it's really difficult to navigate, um, you're definitely going to want to make some improvements to uh, make it mobile optimized or at least mobile responsive. Um, so uh, yeah, just kind of reducing scrolling, ensuring that the phone is, uh, that, that the form itself is responsive and kind of shrinks to the screen um, is really important. And, and also that, um, you know, adding those mobile payments make it super, super easy. So try try your best to add those to your form. All right, and last but not least, tip number seven is an automated donation receipt. And this helps you in a few ways, but it also um, absolutely helps drive retention. Um, so GuideStar found that thanking your donor within 48 hours made them 400% more likely to give again. So uh, this kind of shows that your donors are wanting and expecting and needing that receipt as soon as possible. Um, but that receipt should also be a thank you and showing appreciation to your donors. Um, so uh, I have this example that I pulled from um, one of our customers here. So um, I really like that their automatic receipt made it feel really personal. So um, one of the things that with a lot of these automated receipts, it's very transactional, right? Um, but if you're able to communicate impact and actually make your donor feel special as soon as they make that gift, they're going to have that great experience in mind and all those warm fuzzy feelings, which will make them more likely to give again in the future. So um, this was just a good example. I'll be including the slides um, for Mark to send out or I could send out a follow-up email as well. Um, so if you wanna take a look at this, um, just this example later on, I think it's really great. Um, so when you have a really well-written and well-crafted um, automatic donation receipt, you're helping your donors feel appreciated the instant that they make their gift. And there's also that like uh, reduces their uncertainty um, because I know if I make a donation and I don't hear anything right away, I'm like, did I did I do it right? Did it, did it go through? So, you know, kind of removing that, you know, question for donors um, will make them feel more confident giving through your form in the future. Um, and then there's also for your organization, um, having that receipt go out automatically just takes a task of yours off your plate. Of course, you might want to do some follow up with those donors as well. You know, um, donor thank you calls are always really nice. But as long as your donor gets that receipt right away, you have the opportunity um, to, you know, then engage them afterwards and um, it doesn't have to be so immediate. 
Um, and then also, um, you know, of course, you get that increase in donor retention. Um, so I have a few tips for when you're writing an automatic uh, donation receipt. Um, so you should um, include merge tags, um, which you kind of saw in um, this receipt. Those merge tags pull in the donor's full name, their organization name. Um, it'll also pull in all the transaction info. So um, do your best to use merge tags to make the receipt itself to feel really personalized and also include all the data that they need to do. Um, you know, it also should feel like a sincere thank you, not just a transaction like, hey, um, hey, you made a gift, that's great, but um, really making the donor feel appreciated and going above and beyond is, is better. Um, how their donation makes an impact um, because, you know, they, they selected that tier, right? They're, they're making their gift because they wanna make an impact. So how can you reiterate that impact that they made in your receipt? Um, and then, uh, basically ways that they can con continue to get involved in your organization. So do you want them to um, volunteer maybe, or do you want them to check out this page about your program? Whatever you want them to do next, I think it's always good to put like a next step in there. Um, and then there's also, uh, of course, you wanna include the details that are required to make the receipt up to tax deductible standards. So EIN, um, organization address, contact information, making sure that no goods or services statement is in there. Um, this receipt is, you know, to, you can use this receipt for your tax purposes, just making sure all that language is in there somewhere. Um, I wouldn't make that the, the main focus of it, but including that at the footer maybe is, is, is always good. Um, and then also making sure your donation receipt is actually tailored to the type of gift that the donor made. Um, so if someone made a one-time donation, um, it should kind of share that versus a monthly recurring donation um, so that, you know, your donor feels, you know, confident and verified that they actually made that monthly gift and that went through. Um, so if you're able to, to set that up, I think that's, that's great. So, wow, we actually uh, went through that pretty fast. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I see there's a whole bunch of questions in the, in the chat and the pain, but um, those are, are my seven ways that you can get more donations through your donation form. I have a quick list uh, wrapping everything up here, but um, yeah, I think, you know, just to, to land on a note, I feel like I gave you this Oh, seemingly overwhelming list of things, but um, there is a lot of opportunities where if you can just make even a couple of improvements to drive a little bit higher conversion rates, you're going to see um, you're going to see a lot of impact from that. So break it down to what's feasible for you um, and and get that implemented as soon as you can. Um, and yeah, just to kind of close out um, for me, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about Causevox, um, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to, you know, talk to you about your donation form as well and um, explore, you know, what that could look like if you're interested in getting one of our donation forms set up. Um, so yeah, thank you again, Mark, for having me. This has been so good. Oh, no, that was a lot of great information. And there were some good questions in here, too. So um, one of them was, I think I can kind of combine two of them. Um, other than Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, what what other payment options should be available? PayPal, and then someone also was asking, kind of tying into that, how do you suggest to add cryptocurrency and stock donation options to donation forms? Yeah, great, great questions. Um, I can definitely take the first one. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I typically see, you know, PayPal is, you know, a good option. Um, I would say even before you do PayPal, I mean, I guess it depends on your donor base, like kind of like think through like, what is your uh, what does your typical ideal donor look like and what are the, the payment methods that they're using? Um, you can always do some research around that. Um, so PayPal might be good for a little bit older donors um, that are used to PayPal. Um, but also if you're targeting a younger audience, you might want to think about Venmo, um, which is owned by PayPal as well. I think Venmo would be a great um, option to use as well. I'm trying to think of 
other ones. Um, there might be like Zelle that you could look into. Um, not sure how to get that implemented, but that could be a nice one because that comes right from the donor's bank account. Um, so yeah, there's like a few of those like quick payment options that um, you can also explore. Yeah, and regarding clip cryptocurrency, um, we've actually uh, implemented um, a solution w working with the Giving Block, which is a group that specializes in helping organizations um, with cryptocurrency. Um, there's a process that you have to do to transition that transfer that money between accounts. Basically, it's like almost like a, think of it. As, uh, I'm going to oversimplify it by saying it's like ACHing. Uh, a, a, you know, count from you from your account from uh, from a donor's account to yours, uh, and then the key is that the 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 uh, organization wants to turn that to cash as quickly as possible so that there's no loss or get you know they kind of get it as close to the real value that was intended as possible so that they don't have extra taxes around with that. So that's a whole kind of can of worms, but definitely happy to chat through with it. And, and, and so with cryptocurrency or stocks, quite often you're going to be having an option to, you know, maybe on your giving page, you know, Hey, you want to give into uh, cryptocurrency, click here. And it kind of takes you off into that other process. Same thing with stocks in a lot of cases. And so if you don't have, you know, and Zelle and these other ones may be that type of case as well. If you don't have it integrated with your, your payment processor, um, which in, a lot of these are coming up so quickly, good chance it's not, but uh, it's trying to find that uh, value between offering up as many giving options as possible without totally distracting people, right? <laughs> um, and another question was, do you have guidelines for best practices for gift uh, array amounts on donation forms? And I think you showed one on uh, an earlier slide, but uh, anything else to add to that? Yeah, um, I would, I mean, if I had to like off the top of my head, come up with what I see most commonly used, it probably starts at like 25 and then goes to either 50 or 75. Um, and then over 100 um, usually. So actually on Cosbox, we found that the average gift size is about $111. So we always recommend having a tier at least um, over 100. So um, I would space them out though, um, kind of think through like, you know, a $15 donor can also probably give $25. So, you know, kind of think through like a, a $75 donor can also probably give 100. So kind of like think through like, those um, those gaps are, are kind of important um, when it comes to setting those gift sizes. So uh, think through like what, what kinds of donors you have um, and like you might even wanna check out not only just the average gift size overall, but like what are the average gift sizes of donors who give more than $200 and like kind of craft um, the tiers like around that, for example. Um, so kind of break it down into to those brackets um, for yourself and just see what um, those averages kind of look like. Yeah, definitely run some reports and see what your average and your median donations were in the last year um, or several years and, and then use that as, as your midpoint uh, um, either or somewhere in there of, uh, of giving levels offered. I like it. Yeah. What else? I think some of these were answered as you were going through the presentation. So we're just looking at the chat. Does a uh, question, does the array of possible donations always go from least to most? Oh, that's a good question. That's a great question. Um, it's, there's been a couple of studies on it um, that I, I do think that starting from most to least does tend to increase average gift size, but it also kind of can scare off those lower level donors where like, I don't have $5,000. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so you can absolutely play around with it. Um, one of the things that I tend to recommend is do some testing um, yourself and like run it one way, run your tiers one way for two weeks and then switch it out for the next two weeks and see what performed better for you. Um, you know, just basically, you know, 
play around with it and see what ends up working best for you. Cause I think it could really depend on your audience as well and who's actually landing on that page. Great. There's another great question. Um, can your uh, can you do uh, crowdfunding with your software? And I know that you can do both peer to peer and crowdfunding with with CauseFox, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, crowdfunding is super easy. You can um, we have our templates that you just kind of plug in all your content. You set your fundraising goal and end date. Um, and so you can get a crowdfunding site up and running that's all branded for you. So um, even like I was saying earlier, like branding is, is super important that it looks and feels like your nonprofit. So you can put in all your colors and your logo and then even brand the URL. So it's under your own organization's URL. Um, and so, yeah, you can get a crowdfunding site up and running really easily. So if you're interested, I'd love to connect with you. Just shoot me an email and I can show you a few examples and um, we can chat through what you're thinking for your fundraiser. Here's, here's a great one. Uh, we use what we call extended donation forms that have a narrative or background on the project people are giving to and the short donation forms that are just the, uh, the billing and payment info. Uh, there are times that n neither do well, even though uh, many come to the form suggestions. So like shopping cart abandonment is you're seeing that pretty prevalent. Any, any suggestions? Yeah. Um, I would like to see what these forms look like. I feel like it's hard for me to um, kind of weigh in on that without seeing it, but I would maybe do some. So I think, I think a lot of what you want to do with a donation form is kind of drive people to where they can give, where you want to tell your story before people get there. Um, so by the time they get to that form, it's just really really easy to give right away. Um, I mean, not to say that you do want to emphasize impact on the donation form, uh, the donation page itself. Um, but I think when people click a donate button, they kind of know what they're doing. Like they've already kind of decided that they're interested in making a gift. So I don't know how much like uh, content um, if it's too long, like if it's too long to get to the form itself, that might be preventing some things but um I would again like I said earlier maybe do some testing and see like um if you tell your story really well in an email and get people to get right to that donation page like you don't have to convince them again um but if you're doing something that's more specific about a program I think it does make sense to kind of go into the program details and that's you know on a specific page on your site that you're trying to um communicate that but um yeah i guess i would be interested in seeing that if you want to send it over and i can take it take a look and probably give you some better advice after seeing it yeah it's a, a great place to um wrap actually because uh just a reminder contact emails are there and uh also dropped in the chat um so definitely don't hesitate to reach out um I think we've come to the end of our time, but uh, definitely follow up with Candace uh, or myself if, if we happen to miss your question or if you have any questions after the fact, um, if you're lis listening to this later on. Um, but really appreciate uh, everybody joining us today. And uh, Candace, thank you very much for all that great information today. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it was great being here. Um, thank you everyone for such great questions. Um, and yeah, again, uh, if anyone wants to connect with me, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for having me. I appreciate it. You bet. Have a great day, everyone.